All right, here we are, dude. The fabled um, Bean VOD review. So this is the showcase that um, I top forward, and we're just going to go through the matches here. Um, one thing to note is that I pretty much knew what all my opponents were playing because um, of the like the open deck was scouting thing that I did. So I pair into Sandy Dog round one, and he should be on Vampires. So I take the play. Um... And here's my hand. It's, it's a fine hand. Um, I have the pick your poison in case that's going to be relevant against Vayne Ripper and the green mana to cast it. Just a solid seven card hand versus vampires on the play. Always a keep. Um, so he mulls to six. And we're going to start off with sleight of hand here because um, it looks at. You always want to play slight before consider um, because it looks at two cards so you have more information. On your decision, whether as as opposed to consider where it only looks at one card, and then you have to choose if you want that card or not right there. Um, so we get Shredder and Opt. I'll just take the Shredder here because it's a play for next turn. Um, against his hand, like maybe he doesn't have a push, and Shredder's just very good this game, obviously. So he plays Black Cleave Cliffs and Thought Seizes me. We can get a lot of information um, from this guy's decision here. So he goes and takes Shredder. So. Um, he does play it off Black Cleave Cliffs, too, so. Okay, let's just go to our turn. We can talk about what we think about his moves as the game goes on. Um, so I draw a breeding, I draw a Spell Pierce, which, which is quite good. Like, next turn, maybe he can take the Pick Your Poison with another Thought Seize or Duress Effect, and then try to curve it into the Soren Vein Ripper. So now we're insulated against that with Spell Pierce. Um, I'm just gonna put this in tapped. There's no reason to hold up Spell Pierce here on turn two for anything, really. Like, if he has another Thoughtseize, I'll just Spell Pierce it and not cast my Consider. I, I do value that more than... Um, I, I value the 2 life more than being able to Consider plus Spell Pierce with Thoughtseize. Anyway, here on turn 2, he plays Hive. And to me, like, this makes me think he drew the Hive this turn, because since he plays two Hives in his deck, he would usually want to play the Hive on turn 1 instead of the Black Cleave, because then... Um, if he draws the second hive, he can play that second hive too, untapped, right? Um, but he has blood tithe here, so that doesn't really matter too much. I'm gonna consider obviously shredder here. I, I think this shredder is just bad at this point. Like, I just want to find crews or cantrips to fuel and find crews. Um, yeah, like my, my my next my next turn, I already want to be holding up spell pierce here for his fable or whatever Soren. So. Can't really just tap out to Shredder. Draw an Opt, which is a good draw. And then here I draw Picklock. So now, now this is interesting. Either I Opt to try to find a land to hold up Picklock and Spell Pierce, or I just pass to guarantee holding up Picklock. And I think it's important to recognize um, that if he if he took Shredder, he could just be on a hand that has like um, multiple Blood Tithe Harvesters. Because Pick Your Poison really doesn't do much against it. He's probably not going to take the Axe over the Shredder. Unless he has exactly like a push. So, if he does have a second Blood Tithe Harvester. Um, I really need to be able to Pick Lock here to try to find Cruise. Because Opt doesn't fuel Cruise nearly as well as Pick Lock does. And then Cruise will find me like the red sources to stabilize against the aggro draw with like a Lightning Axe. So, I, 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 th I think it is important to, to just pass here um, and not try to Opt. Just to make sure that we get, can guarantee casting Picklock if he has another Blood Scythe Harvester. And also, we don't really need, like, the third land this turn that much. Like, making our land drops in this specific hand isn't that important. It's just, like, finding crews and, like, trying to trying to pull ahead as fast as you can. Because we, we do have two interactive cards, which are very good. So, as long as we can stop what they're doing, we need to, like, find our own moves to pull ahead. So he goes ahead and attacks, we take it. And then he plays Swamp and Dust Legion Zilla. So I'm like, alright, this is, I'm, I'm kind of chilling right now. Like, if I can find Cruz, assuming he doesn't hit, like, a Thoughtseize here, then I can just kind of start closing this game out. Because this is, like, a really weak, weak play, obviously. So I free the Fey. Um, opt and spell pierce, or opt and sleight of hand along with milling two red sources. So I'll just take the, uh, the sleight of hand again. Because now I'm pretty priced into just casting the cantrip on my own turn. And it looks at two cards. 
So we do find Spire Bluff, which is great. Um, so I, I did think about playing Picklock here and holding up Spell Pierce. Just to, like, block the Dust Legion Zealot and take less damage. But, again, like, since this was his play, his turn is so weak that I feel like I, sh I need to just be, like, looking for crews and trying to, like, pull ahead as fast as I can. Especially with this Hive, because in a couple turns, like, he can get some stuff going. So I hit another Spire Bluff Canal and Sleight of Hand, and I'm just going to take the Sleight of Hand. I, I don't want another tap land for the next turn. I'd rather just have my Sleight of Hand find me, like, an untap land or... Obviously, the crews that I've been talking about. Um, and here, let's just pass. Um, I could want to Lightning Axe this Blood Tithe to take less damage. And it's it's important to note that um, I think Sandy's, Sandy's list had zero shield rids. Let, let me just check that. Because that's a, that's a good question on this if we want to use this axe because um shieldred or a four drop could easily be in his range here e e even like shieldred more so than archfiend because he didn't take the pick your poison so let's let's check sandy dog's list and yeah this is what i was talking about he didn't have a single shieldred in his list it's just three archfiend and two preachers which he didn't play last turn so i'm putting him on like no shieldred so i can probably fire this axe on the blood type here to take less damage um and then i want to keep up spell pierce so let's see what he does. Swings both. And I, I guess I don't end up axing. Um, kind of interesting on why that's the case. I, I, I basically feel like I'm at a high enough life total and I have so much, so many resources here. Like two more cantrips. Um, and he probably doesn't have a thought seize because he would have played it last turn. So I'm not going to really get disrupted this turn. So I'm going to kind of get to do my own thing. So I, I would rather just maybe hold this for a potential, like, shielder or preacher, I guess. I'm, I'm not really sure if that makes sense. But um, also, it, it is a third spell on my own turn. I don't know. I, I could go either way there. But especially um, pre-board, where he doesn't have graveyard hate, I feel like it's it's fine to use your life total as a resource to just find crews and win um so this is fine he plays takanuma out okay um which which probably means he doesn't have another land in hand because it's like the best land and then plays another blood tithe okay so i'm assuming that's what he drew for this turn or last turn off the dust legion because, um, or else he would have just played it over the Dust Legion Zealot thing. I think we go to our turn here. We opt. Now here's a Shredder. Um, again, like, he hasn't really been playing anything. So I don't really think I want this. Um, because, like, removal spells pretty easily in his range. And, again, I just want to, like, find crews and basically pull ahead. Because I have most things covered here. So I find Fiery Impulse, which is kind of nice. I just go ahead and Impulse this guy. Go to my turn, draw. Spire Bluff, play Sleight of Hand. And then I hit the crews. That's good. Um... Okay, so I hit these three. So now that he can play around Spell Pierce next turn, like, he doesn't... He probably doesn't have another land, but he can Blood Token to find it pretty easily if he wants to. So I'm just going to go ahead and Lightning Axe one of these and get a Phoenix back. So I actually did get rewarded there for not Lightning Axing in combat. Um, well, I guess I didn't really get rewarded. Like, it was kind of the same. I actually didn't didn't get rewarded. I took three extra damage, but like I ended up using the axe on my turn to discard Phoenix and get it back as a third spell because I didn't have another spell here. But the fact that we hit the fiery impulse made it so that I kind of got punished for that for that play. But it's okay. I'm at thirteen. He doesn't really have anything in play here. And let's see what happens here. And he plays Archfiend of the Dross into my known pick your poison. So I'm like, all right, I'm just kind of chilling here. Like he probably doesn't have a better play. Um. Pretty interesting on why he took Shredder that early in the game over Pick Your Poison, if, like, this was just going to be how the game played out. But now I'm, I'm assuming he has, like, multiple um, 
multiple arch fiends or something, or maybe a vein ripper in hand. So I don't know. I'm 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 just happy that this is my spot, honestly. Here we get to play the shredder out, and then pick your poison. Still have up a spell pierce. I can probably discard one of the spell pierces though here. I just want to keep all my resources in hand. Especially as this is game one, so it doesn't really have any counterplay. Other than playing like another Archfiend here, and then I just need to find like double removal when I'm killing. So we just play Soren, and, and I have I have another spell pierce here after discarding one, so this is kind of just very good. I don't think this goes on too much longer. Yeah, I hit another Phoenix here. Yeah, this this game's just pretty over. Okay. So post board. Um, let's let's check the let's check each player's list in between these games. Just to like kind of get you in my headspace. So he has two duress and two hearse, but no um. But no go blanks here. Okay, and then he might be bringing in these extinction events. And um, for what he's cutting, I would assume it's like. Um, these preachers. So I, I think versus versus this exact build, since he doesn't have any shield rids, and he's probably cutting Preacher, because like that's the most logical thing in his mapping, I think I just trim two axes. So now now I have two axes in my deck, but I keep um, both my fiery impulses instead. Because they're much better at killing Blood Tithe. So keep that in mind. He plays first and Let's see if, if he keeps seven here before talking. Okay, he keeps seven. So my, my hand is not very good. It has two phoenixes, but especially against two hearses, um, I do think... I mean, you you, don't, you really don't want to mull hands against black red anyway. Like, black red is kind of the one deck that I feel like you can get away with justifying keeping one landers. So, from justifying keeping one landers, then I should also justify keeping, like, any reasonable hand. It's like four spells and three lands. And, and these guys do get there a lot, honestly. Like, if you can spell pierce a fable at the right time, and then they just have a hearse going, you can just, like, jam a phoenix, and then jam another phoenix, and you're kind of just winning. Especially because, like, these don't die to push, unless they have revolt. So, like, if you don't kill any of their guys, and they don't have a blood tithe, then, like, these are kind of unkillable in some spots. So, he leads on Thoughtseize, off Black Cleave Cliffs. Takes Sleight of Hand, which my better cantrip makes sense. Draw another Opt. Plays hearse. Uh, okay. You go ahead and opt. And spell pierce is just good here. Like very good, very good top. Just exactly kind of what I said at the beginning, where I can spell pierce his play and then jam some phoenixes and, and hope it gets there through hearse. So I go ahead and shock my steam vents. Any thoughts, eases? Um. This is an interesting spot, because I could potentially let this resolve. Like, I could opt, and then see what I find. If it's a pick lock, I'll probably spell pierce. But if not, like, I could just let it resolve to make him take two damage. Let's see what I do here. I think that's, that's what my reasoning was. So I hit a sleight of hand. Now I think I'm just going to top this and spell pierce. But I, I could also not spell pierce. And just make him take two damage. Because if you think about Phoenix, like, 5 times 3, so 5 attacks with a Phoenix is 15. And he's at 16, right? So getting him down to less life is, is actually super relevant. So let's see what I do here. I, I do let it resolve, yeah. Um, because I kind of thought he would just take the Spell Pierce. Like, I'm assuming he's, like, missing a land here and has, like, 3 drops. But he ends up taking Sleight of Hand. But this, this is fine. Like, I'm, I still have Spell Pierce. And then he has, I think, a Duress, too? Yeah. So now this is whatever it like, takes my spell pierce. So I, I got super rewarded for doing it like that. Now he's at 14 instead of 16. Let's draw another land. And then he passes. So I'm, I'm like, okay, this is really cool. He doesn't have a third land. So I, I kind of needed him to break here for a bit, or else I would just be super behind. Um, but now, yeah, I go ahead and jam Phoenix. And he has no move. He doesn't have go for the throat or anything. Let's see if he draws a land or anything. No, he just draws a bank buster. I'm like, all right, like that's maybe the worst card that you could have drawn. I'm chilling. 
Now I'll just play another Phoenix and, and pass. And he draws and concedes. So, this, I mean, this worked out super well. Um, these actually were, like, great in my opening hand. So that's cool. All right, let's go on to match number two. Here against uh, Maru Lanzi. And he's also on Vampires. So he gets the play here. And I guess it, it is important to, to look at his list again. Just like we did Sandy Dogs to see how many shield grids and preachers he has. Um, because then I can evaluate how good my lightning axe is. So he has three Archfiend, no preachers, and one Kalidus. So no shield grids either. So um, I'm, I'm pretty happy playing against this list. Um, yeah. And he's, he, he does have two Duress main as well. So that's something to, to note here. Um, he goes ahead and does he keep seven? He mulls to six, okay. Um, again, I'm not going to really mulligan fine playable hands versus vamps. So I keep. He goes black cleave go. Okay, no thought I This is kind of interesting because I guess I could have um, I could have played uh, this land tapped and then had shredder on turn two. But I think playing opt, like... I'm, I'm probably maybe going to top a red source anyway. I'm not sure. Depends on what he plays. Like, if he plays a blood tithe, I probably will. But the fact that I have cruises, and now I have two. So if he top decks, like, one of his six discard spells, I still have a cruise. Makes me just want to cast all my spells, like, as efficiently as I can to fuel it. Um, so he just passes here. Nothing. So I, th that was a second spell pierce there on the end step. And um, I already had one, so I didn't really want to have another one. There's a chance the second one also converts. But, like, what if his hand is just, like, has arch fiends of the drosses, and I want to try to find that pick your poison or something. So, I think binning is completely reasonable there. So, I go land go. A little bit of an awkward draw here. I draw Phoenix and Picklock, but Picklock's okay. And then, also, on turn three, he passes. So, this is super interesting. Like, he's basically, he has to have, like, removal spells and Vein Ripper and um, arch fiend. I'm pretty sure you're always supposed to be jamming here into, um, into spell pierce. Like, I don't, I mean, you could have, like, two more lands in hand and an Archfiend for next turn, so then you go Archfiend and then play, like, Soren or Fable around Spell Pierce, but, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know, he should kind of assume this is a weak start, I think, just jam any 3-drop if he has it, but. So we draw Steam Vents, really good, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and pass with Pick Luck up, definitely not playing my Shredder here into open mana, and this fuels Cruise, so that was a great draw from me. And the Archfiends... Pick lock and whiff, but I hit a phoenix and mill three lands. Okay, draw another spell pierce. This is kind of brutal. Um, I have the option here of playing treasure cruise and tapping out and going to nine cards in hand and then playing a land. Then to eight cards in hand and then maybe discarding phoenix. Um, I think that is what I should do, because I, I, I really don't have much else going on. But instead, it looks like I go ahead and play... Ah, okay. Yeah, I go ahead and play Picklock here. This, this makes sense. It's like my worst creature, and I just want to axe this. It's like build your own, pick your poison, kind of kill. So I, I, I think this is super reasonable. Um, here he duresses me, though, so... It's pretty interesting on, on what I should do. I think I should Spell Pierce here, so I don't run into another Archfiend. Um, unless he he wants to just let this Spell Pierce resolve, and then I keep my Axe. Also, it, it's another card in the yard for, for Cruise. So he pays, and takes Axe, and has a push too. So he, he's going super aggressive here. Probably means he has another removal spell. Um, so I go ahead and... Oh, shit. That was, that was unfortunate that it skipped like that. But I went and cruised and played a Shredder and drew three lands, I think. Um, yeah, I, I really don't have many moves here other than just, like, play my Shredder. So, this is not looking good for me at all. Like, I didn't draw any cantrip to get these Phoenixes back. I didn't draw Pick Your Poison, like... I think he plays another sh another Archfiend here. So, I'm, I'm pretty just dead here. Uh, I have to block... 
to go to six and hope to draw, like, pick your poison to kill one of them. And to get back phoenixes and try to, like, double block to kill the other one. Um, and I draw impulse. So now I'm going to shredder and impulse and try to find another removal spell off the connive. Or else I'm pretty fucking dead. And I whiff and concede, I think. Yeah, okay. GG. Um, game two. Let's see how he sideboards. He has two hearse and two go blank. Um, and it's probably boarding out like Dust Legion Zealot, maybe Kalidus, maybe not. Um, maybe some of these two mana removal spells, they're a little clunky. So we're on the play here, and pretty reasonable hand, oh, sorry, just getting situated in my chair. Um, he mulls to six, and keeps to six, so we pass, he thought seizes, I'm letting it resolve, because I want to cantrip into a, like a, a free the fae, so I don't want to let him take it, I don't care if my consider gets taken. Spell Pierce, again, I'm, I'm always going to be topping Spell Pierce in these spots. It's just so good. Like, against Fable. And even Hearse here. So I draw a Consider and Pass. Not a bad draw. Another Black Cleave Cliffs and a Hearse. So I'll go ahead and Consider. And here's a Botanical Sanctum. I, I, I think I just need to bottom this. Or yard it. I'm going to find a Green Source anyway. And I just want to kind of find Crews or pick your... Uh, pick lock to find cruise. I, I do end up keeping it here. I, I, gu I guess I see my, my logic. Um, I'm just going to pick your poison, this hearse, instead of spell pierce it. So that I can spell pierce a fable. Or, like, it still spell pierces a soren. And, and spell piercing a soren is better than pick your poisoning whatever the soren puts in anyway. Because, like, they still have the soren in that line. So th this resolves and I opt. And let's see what I opt into. A shredder, which I bought him. Because I want to pick your poison and hold up spell pierce here. So I, I can't play a shredder here. I, I thought about playing shredder pick lock. Or shredder pick your poison. But it, it's just so bad. Because then I don't have spell pierce up on the on the key turn. And I'd rather dig towards cruise. Like I just found this. So I, I think I just go ahead and um, kill your hearse. See it kills two things and I pass. Soren. Okay. I'm going to spell pierce it. He's three cards left. Here, another, another pick lock prankster. I'm going to fire one off to try to hit Cruz here. I hit a consider and a lightning axe. I'll just take the consider to keep my wheels going. And then I think shock in the steam vents and pass with another one up. Let's see what he does here. It's an archfiend. Kalidus. Okay. Um, so I, I, I do believe I only have one axe left in the deck, which is a little, a little rough, but um, it's okay. I didn't really expect this card to be left in, but it's also not that good here. It's really just not that good. Like, if I find Cruz, I can just kind of be miles ahead. So, I end up playing Picklock and hitting a Sleight of Hand and milling a Phoenix. Okay. Here, I'm going to start with Sleight of Hand. Try to find Cruz. Find Impulse and Picklock. I'm just going to take Picklock. And then, I think, fire that Picklock off. Yep. I hit Cruz Axe. So, that's my last Axe. Um, with three cruises left in the deck, I think it's pretty important that we just axe the Kalidus here, or else it can kind of get out of hand, right? Let's say I get back my Phoenix here by casting Cruise, but then he kills my Phoenix, pumps this to a 5-6, hits me for like 5 lifelink. I'm kind of like, I don't know, I, I don't want to play that game really. So, I go ahead and take this axe, and I have three, I have three pick locks left. Um, so I can... If I kill the Kalidus, like, I can get back this Phoenix right now, and then still have three, like, little 1-3s to kind of get there. You only have two cards left. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm gonna do this, and I'm, I actually mill a Phoenix off that Consider. Um, obviously I'm gonna Consider first there, because either I can mill a Phoenix to get it back, or I can draw into a Phoenix before playing my Lightning Axe and then discard it. So that was obviously, like, very good. I end up in a, with a Fiery Impulse left in my hand after the Consider. And he plays Archfiend, but I, I do have Impulse, so... I'm kind of chilling. And draw Drake. Drake's just the nuts draw here. Um, swing both. He gets the block. 
We just kill it and play Drake. Draw, pick your poison. Cool. And he concedes. Okay, cool. Game three on the draw. Make sure this is going yet. 25 minutes. Okay. Okay. Alright. So he's on the play. He most to six. This is my hand. Pretty pretty good hand. Um, I'm just going to probably play this this thing tapped on turn one so that it can pick luck on turn two. And he most to five and then plays Swamp Thoughtsy. So he's on three cards in hand and I had another pick lock. So I'm like, alright, this is good. Really good for me. I draw Drake. Um, still going to play my tap land here. Let's see if he's another thoughts he's to take pick lock or not. Is it hearse? Okay, it's fine. Lands lands really good. Now I can start casting these four drops. He only has two cards in hand, so I'm just gonna pass with um, pick lock up here. I I did shock this in because I I was unsure um, if I want to put this on red or not. Like I probably do because of the Drake, but I don't really want to like just snap put it on red because all my blue sources really matter. So, let's see what he has here. And he has Fable. So, he did have Thoughtseize's Hearse Fable. Um, good hand by him on a multi-5. But it, he does only have one card left in hand. So, I'm going to pick lock here. And we hit Pick Your Poison or Spell Pierce. And um, I think it's easy, Pick Your Poison. Spell Pierce, it, it could be good. But, like, just Pick Your Poison to deal with one of these two things on board is, like, great. Um, so, now here's my turn. And let's think about what we want to do here. Um... I'm of the opinion that we should pick your poison this hearse and then axe this shaman and play sleight of hand in some order to get back to Phoenix. And then I have Drake next turn as well. Um, like, as long as I kill both this and this, then this fable's not that good, right? It's not really copying much. Um, he doesn't have a fourth land because I killed this. So he has to have a fourth land plus an Archfiend for me to kind of be a little worried because I use my pick your poison. So let's start with Slide Advantage to make my decision easier. Also, killing the Hearse now means like all my cruises are alive for the rest of the game. Now I found another pick your poison. So now, now I'm super happy with my line. I have another answer to the um, Archfiend. This is why pick your poison is so good. Because it's it's a one mana spell for your Phoenix, right? To, to come back. That also kills Hearse in the same turn. So... Now the hearse activates, whatever. Now I can discard Phoenix to Lightning Axe, kill the Shaman, and get it back. All in the same turn. There's like, there's no card that does that. Like Prismari Command, you have to kill the hearse, and then the next turn you can you can get your Phoenixes back. But this just does it all in the same turn. So he discards Blood Tithe and a land, plays Untapped Land, and Archfiend, I think, right? Yeah, so he, he had a good draw out of it, but um, obviously I hit the second pick your poison, so we're kind of chilling. Um, I think I just go ahead and cast the Pick Your Poison because one way it gets not great for me is if he draws a Thought Seize or Duress here and takes the Pick Your Poison, especially Duress punishes me the most because I still have Crackling Drake, which can't get Duressed. Um, so if, if he duress, if I play Drake and he Duresses this, then he flips Fable and can start copying Archfiend and he doesn't have to block the Drake that next turn because he's at 13 and it's only doing like 6. So I do this, kill his thing, and then play Pick Lock. He says, come on, because the third one that he saw, pretty funny. But he's my boy, though, so all love. Um, and then he just passes here, I think, yeah. So no play. I draw Cruise, which is obviously great. Hit with both, play Drake. Takanuma's back the, um... Back the Archfiend of the Dross, and draws a land, I think, to copy. So, okay. He's kind of staying alive here, but... I think this turn, yeah, I draw Cruise, or I draw Axe into another Axe, I think. And, he, and I attack and he copies, and then I double Axe it, and, um, and get through here for lethal. Okay, cool. So we're 2-0, playing against Vamps. Round 3 here. Playing against Rostov, who's also Vamps. Okay. Three in a row. Um, he's on the play, and he keeps seven. I obviously have to keep the seven. He, he dresses my Thoughtseize, or my Treasure Cruise on turn one. 
let's again look up his list to check the address numbers and all of that stuff. Um, yeah, he was actually on Caustic Bronco here, I think. It's a little different than the other lists. Um, but still, like, three Archfiend, one Shield Grid, two Duress Man. It's, it's all kind of similar. Um, I think I'm just going to go ahead and play River Red Pathway here on blue. And pass. Let's see if this works. Let me try to let's restart this one. It might because my it may it maybe it's because my internet is so bad. I don't know, but this is kind of scuffed. Okay. Here, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna restart my moto here, but I'm gonna keep the recording going because I don't want to like I don't know how to edit this honestly. My internet's just completely down. Fuck. All right, test, test. I don't know if the thing cut off. But I, I don't think recording can cut off your screen if your internet goes out, right? I don't really know how this works, but I think I'm going to keep it going because I don't want to edit anything. And we're just going to continue once I get back in. Okay. Okay. Um Yeah. So here's a spot and then I pass with River Glide. And he, he played Blood Crypt, so doesn't have, like, Hive or Black Leaf Cliffs. And then also plays Mutavault, so it's pretty land light here, it looks like. Another Consider. It's just fine. It's a good card. And here, um, it's close on if we want to play the Shredder here or not into Push. Um, because next turn we can Shredder plus consider or something to discord an axe. So I'm, I'm, I don't think we should play anything here. Let's just pass. Also, this gives us the out of um, finding one of our three spell pierces off this consider if he casts like a, a thing, right? So there, there's always equity there to speak about. And he draws thought seeds for turn, um, I think. Looks like that. So let's just let it resolve. I, I shouldn't be I shouldn't be F6ing through these, but anyway, he, he misses a land drop again, so I'm like, alright, I, I kind of have to know, like, so much about this guy's hand, right? It's like, all three drops in Archfiends, maybe Blood Tithe Harvester, um, maybe Vein Rippers, like, all that stuff. A lot of his deck is in his hand, probably. Um, so, I hold my opt there to just go Shredder opt, and he, he didn't actually take my Shredder, so he probably has push, but... This is a good turn to play Shredder Opt. Like, he still has to commit a mana to it next turn because he has Mutavault to his other land. Great draw. Discard a Axe. And bottom that. Looking for Cruise. Draws another land and has a push. 
And then has a Thoughtsy. So this is super interesting. It means that last turn he had... Because he had to draw the land this turn, right? So last turn he had two Thoughtseizes. So that means the turn before that, when he passed, he had one Thoughtseize in his hand at least. So he chose not to Thoughtseize me there. And he did tank for a little bit on that turn. So now this kind of makes sense. Um, but pretty interesting play by him to not choose to run out that Thoughtseize on that turn. And it, it did kind of pay off for him because now he gets to snipe this pick lock. That I drew into. So can't blame the guy for playing well. Draw Phoenix here. Um, which is not a very good draw. Now, now I feel like I'm kind of not in a great spot. Like I don't have green to cast this. And pretty cold to like a Vayne Ripper here. Um, or even an Arch Fiend. And he, he drew his land. So now he's kind of going to get his plays going. Draws another Mutavault. Cast Arch Fiend. Okay. Any cruises? No. Um. So either I could Phoenix here and just pass, or I could team up to kill this Archfiend. Like, I could just pass and then Axe plus Impulse. I, th I think that's a little better, honestly. Because I, I, I basically just want to minimize the amount of damage I take here, especially with two Mutavaults. So if I play Phoenix here, it's like, okay, I'm going to be hit for six here. Maybe even more if he attacks with these Mutavaults, because, I mean, I don't really want to block. I guess I could block, but I still take two off this killing um, my creature. But if, if I kill this now, it just gives me the most time to draw crews and eventually like get out of it, even if I'm behind right now. So no fire up the Mutavaults. I'm going to go ahead and kill this. Let's see what he plays. I think it's another one? Yeah. Okay. Sleight of hand. Hit pick lock. Pick lock. Hit cruise. So that's basically like what the deck does. Um, I just am in like the cruise waiting room for as long as I can and giving my, myself the most time. And then I cruise here. One phoenix in the yard. If I can hit, like, a breeding pool or something, I can also kill this guy here. But I don't. That's fine. Um, just pass. I hit three spells. Not bad. Hopefully he can find a green source next turn. And here he plays Soren. And just animates Mutavault and sacks his Mutavault. So I'm, I'm super happy about this. If he plays Vayne Ripper, I'm, like, super dead. Um, and now he's sacking his land and using his whole turn just to kill my phoenix, which is just going to come back. But he's, this is like a super aggressive line by him. He's kind of hoping... Um, I don't know. He's hoping my hand is like just weird. But... Oh, I, I have six through everything. This is fucked. Um, you hate to see that. I, I basically can't fix that mistake. But... Um, if, if, if I ever f six through a turn in this video... It's just like... It's not the worst. You have to understand there's a bunch of like micro decisions in all my cantrips. But at the end of the turn, like all that matters is what ended up in my hand. And in the play, in, in board. So, like, it's it's not the end of the world, I think, if, if we skip through a couple turns. But it does kind of suck. But anyways, um, this is my hand. No phoenixes in graveyard. I have a brazen, a picklock, and a picker poison with no green sources. And I got these back. So, I'm pretty happy about my position now. Again, if he draws Vein Ripper, it's a little tough. But now I at least have a bar where to, like, bounce the Archfiend and then pick your poison the Vein Ripper. But I'm taking a lot of damage here. So he plays Blood Tithe. Let's see what else he does. And then he puts a Vamp. No, he, he sacks a Vamp. So he goes up. Sacks the Blood Tithe. Wants to hold on to the Mutavault. And goes ahead and kills this Phoenix. So now I go to 8 here. And then I have to decide if I want to chump here. And it's important to now notice our plan. Um, because with, with this Shredder, either I go to 2 and I'm like dead to like too many things i'm dead to this killing one of my creatures and i'm dead to this going up so i'm pretty sure i have to chump block so after i chump block now i don't have a way to draw a card right draw a green source because um this draws a spell like this is my connive so i get less looks at a green source for pick your poison so now my 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 move is to i think maybe let this stay in play and try to kill him with the oil counters being um depleted so we'll see how that works out. But that was my 
how I imagine this game to go. So he's just going to crack a blood here, main phase. Discard another random Soren, play a land, say go. Okay. I draw Spell Pierce. So I'm, I'm going to lead on... This is this is actually super interesting, this, this turn. Um, I could obviously free the Fae here and hope to just hit like some Treasure Cruise or some spells and get back to Phoenix and try to chump again. But what I think is, is better is to play Pick Lock here from Exile and just try to chump block the Archfiend. Because if, if I live one more turn, I'm going to win. Because this is going to go to one counter on his upkeep. I'm going to chump, go to like four. And then the next turn, it's going to remove the last counter he's going to lose. Um, so I think it's important to just like notice the ways you can win. So here I'm just going to play Pick Lock and pass. And I kind of, I, I did calculate a lot. I tanked a bunch in this spot. And I'm like, okay, he can animate the Mutavolt and try to throw it at my pick lock. Um, which which will basically kill me, because then I'll have to bounce the Archfiend. And it'll have more counters. Or I can play the Brazen and block. So I'm, I'm still I'm still fine in that line. But I calculated that if he's going to animate the Mutavolt and try to sack it to Soren, he's going to have to animate the Mutavolt first, right? In response to the animate of the Mutavolt, I'm going to Brazen the Soren. And then once he plays the Soren again, even if he draws a land for turn, I have Spell Pierce to Spell Pierce the Soren on the way down, and then chump and then kill him. So we'll see how this plays out. I basically thought like he didn't really have that many ways to get out of this, with like Brazen plus Spell Pierce on my end, with only two cards in his hand. And worst case, he draws Fatal Push. Then I'll like Brazen the Archfiend, I guess. Or I can even, like, play the Brazen, assuming he doesn't animate Mutavolt. But there's a lot of play here. So he animates Mutavolt. I, I go ahead and bounce the Soren here. I mean, he doesn't really have a good move. He attacks with both singling land. I go ahead and chump. I go to two. Land, Soren, Spell Pierce. And then, basically, I have to hope he doesn't want to, like, a go for the throw on his own turn, I guess, to kill it upkeep. But even then, like, he has no cards in hand. I'm kind of chilling, right? Um, so I think I do some some moves here. I put another Spell Pierce in my hand and pass with a Brazen, and he just dies. So, super well played by me, I think, recognizing how to win that. Um, and also, this, this was this was an interesting game by him of, of holding that Thoughtseize. And it kind of paid off for him. But, anyway, we'll move on to the second game. Okay. Great hand. He plays Pathway Thoughtseize, signaling no um, Hive and no Blood or Black Leaf Lifts. So maybe Land Light. He takes Pick Lock, which is pretty obvious. That's my best card. Um, I just play Botanical Snake and pass. And what? He doesn't know about Spell Pierce. Right? I mean, Steam Vents. Yeah, okay. Plays Hearse. Okay. Um, cast Consider. Hit Opt. Opt's fine. Whatever. I'm just going to jam this, this uh, Shredder here. No reason to, to hold it there. At this point, like, because I don't have a spell pierce, like, I, I just need to, like, jam my cards and hope they kind of work. Um, he goes Fable here. So, Thoughtseize, Hearse, Fable. Good curve. Pretty hard to to compete. But we'll try our best. Draw another cantrip. Okay. So, let's just lead off on Consider here. Hit a spell pierce. That's just too bad at this point. Like, I need to be able to beat, like, Archfiend, or find a kill spell for this thing, or pick your poison, and start doing some moves. Um, so I do find pick your poison. It's, again, it's unfortunate here that um, pick your poison wasn't my first spell cast, because now, when I pick your poison, I'll have to discard the Phoenix, and he can hearse it, right? So it doesn't quite work. Um, so what do I want to do here? I can definitely get to cast another spell. And I'm probably going to cast Pick Your Poison here. I'm not going to really hold it for an Archfiend. Like, he just has two things that I already want to be Pick Your Poisoning. 
And I already have, I have two more pick your poisons anyway for the Archfiend in my deck still. So, um, I think, I think I should pick your poison the Fable and hope his hand is just kind of like lands. I think that gives me the best win percentage. Because then I can kind of ignore the Hearse, right? I'm going to keep the Phoenix in my hand, maybe discard one of these opts or like if I draw a bad spell, I'll discard that. So this is a 2-4. Now it can block this. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I think my play is to go pick your poison on the Fable and then pass with like an opt up or something. But I, I go ahead and opt here, I guess, to get me more information. I don't think that's a bad play, necessarily. Like, I guess if I draw a Treasure Cruise, I could be picture poisoning this hearse. But at the same time, I probably would just discard that Treasure Cruise and hit the Fable. Um, here, I think I'll just discard, like, opt, right? I have enough shit going on already. No to Stormcarve Coast, draw land. I just play that land out, really? This is super interesting, because I thought I was going to be pick your poisoning the fable here. Hmm. I guess, th okay, there's a point to which fable just is not that good in most of these spots, like right here, with his three cards in hand. Like, killing the fable is only good if his hand is like two lands, right? And he wants to just draw two cards off of them. Then killing it's really good. But Sand is already, like, reasonable cards. Saving this for Archfiend is, like, a way bigger game. Because this this flipping is, like, basically a zero. Like, who cares? And the, the discard and draw two only matters if his hand is a certain range. And I have really no read on his range. Like, he just curved one, two, three drop. So I don't think there's enough information for me to, like, go after the Fable here. So I, I think this makes sense. Um, honestly. So... Yeah, yeah, okay. I guess going into this turn, that was my whole thought process, that I didn't really want to kill this Fable. So that's why I opted and did all this shit, like, I don't know. If I found, like, a removal spell, I could kill this, and then maybe decide if I want to pick your poison. Because now he has less mana. But we'll just pass here. I think no attacks, yeah. But this game does not look very good for me right now. So he keeps all the cards in hand, so now I feel rewarded that I didn't, um, kill that, obviously. Plays Mutavault as fourth land. Swings, I think, and has a push. Okay, unfortunate. I'm kind of getting clobbered here. Plays Archfiend. Okay. Well, like, I, I kind of played the best I could into this. Into his, like, very good start. Um, let's see what I can do now. I think I start with... I think I start with Picklock. No, I, I think I start with pick your poison, actually, right? No, okay. I think maybe I should have started with pick your poison, because then it, it kills this, and then it puts four cards in my yard. So then if I pick pick lock into a cruise, um, I would have exactly seven cards in yard and could cruise. So he would basically have to hearse me then, uh, if he's scared of the cruise. And then if I hit, like, phoenixes or something, he gets really punished. But I think I should have started with pick lock, or pick your poison, because I'm, I'm always doing this this turn. So this seems kind of bad. Yeah, this seems bad to me. Okay, I'm going to take impulse. And I think I'm just going to shoot the goblin. No, 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 I'm not going to shoot the goblin here. I'm probably going to shoot the, the fable. Yeah, okay. Thought sees me. I'm gonna shoot the... Okay, I end up shooting the goblin just to save myself life here. Because if I shoot this, he can crew the hearse. Um, and then hit me for like... 6 plus these two. So, like... 10 damage. And, I mean, ref reflection doesn't really matter too much, I think. Also, this goblin is, is kind of better than the fable here because it gives him a, a treasure, which is an artifact. So if I draw more pick your poisons, I want to be able to kill the hearse. And if he has a treasure, I can't. So he cruise. Takes phoenix, takes opt, eats all my shit. Attacks. He, he ends up eating my phoenix there instead of attacking with hearse. Which is super interesting because now I draw the one punish, which is, which is Drake. But I think it's kind of reasonable for him to do that. I don't know. Like, if I get the phoenix back... Um, 
I mean, I don't really know. Like, I guess I can just start chumping this Drake. Like, let's say I draw Cruz, get the Phoenix back, chump the Drake, or ch chump the hearse. Then next turn, get the get the Phoenix back again, try to amass this amount of value. So I think it makes somewhat of sense to do that. But I draw the Drake, which is super punishing, because imagine I'm at, like, six less life. I think I have to block with the Drake here. Maybe not. I'm at eight. No, I, I don't, actually. He has no cards. Let's say he draws a land. He has to crew. He attacks for six, seven, eight, but I can just block the reflection. But yeah, Drake's insane. Very good draw. Like, maybe the one draw I have. Hers I mean, Cruise would be good, too. Draw pick lock, which is great for next turn. And now I'm totally back in it. And I, I feel like now I kind of have to get unlucky to lose this game. I feel like I'm ahead. Which is just so crazy, because like, he had thoughts he's into Hearse, into Fable, into Archfiend, into push my thing into two more discard spells. But I'm kind of still chilling, just because the game played out like this. So he swings for eight, and I just take it, and I'm going to try to chump the Hearse next turn with my pick locks. And two turn him in the air with this. So I think I lead on, um, what do we lead on, Shredder here? Yeah, Shredder, and then I think I cast the pick lock from Exile. Um, I was really debating leaving up green versus leaving up red here, but I, I do have, like, one more removal spell in my deck than, a, than pick your poison, so I don't think it mattered anyway. I don't think I drew anything. Let's see. Yeah. Discard land, and just clock for nine, and pass with two blockers up. I think he copies Mutavolt. Yeah, that's fine. So, he attacks with Mutavolt. Right, let's see what he does. Yeah. So, I have to block. Hoping that he didn't draw anything here, so I just win. But, he drew a push, I think. Yeah. So, his, his Mutavolt died at the end of turn. Revolt trigger. Kill my thing. Um, so now we're in, now we're in kind of a close game again, right? Am I, am I behind here? I don't really know. Like, it kind of all depends on what this hits. Like, if I hit Phoenixes, I'm probably going to win. And I draw Cruise, so I'm like, alright, let's go. Let's start with Cruise. Hit these, okay. Um, I think I'm going to fire off a Free the Fae. I think I end up discarding, like, land here. No, sleight of hand, okay. And I hit a phoenix and a impulse. So I, I basically just, like, kind of drew into the nuts this game after his good start, but that's kind of what the deck does. He goes ahead and, um... I go ahead and kill his hearse. Kill his fable. I think I send here for two. Or no, I send here... What do I send here for? Should I send with both? Because if, if he has Soren plus land, I still don't die, right? I don't know. Probably should have sent with both. Maybe there was something I was scared of dying to, though. I forget. But, yeah, obviously we're just chilling. We have cruise in hand, another pick look. So that, that was a really close game. Um, but the... The Crackling Drake at the key turn basically made it so I had an opportunity to win the game instead of just having it play out where I have to be able to chump and shit every turn. So, that was really fortunate. Happy about that one. Round four. Playing against Danny TB, who's also on Vampires, okay. So, another round of that. Good hand. He moves to six. Okay. I slight and take this over Steam Vance, I think. Not a good sleight of hand. Duresses me, takes my cruise, but I draw a cantrip, so okay, it's good. Blood Crypt tapped, okay. Um, super interesting. Probably has push a bunch of three drops, Fane Ripper. No Blood Tithe Harvester. Definitely Mill Breeding Pool. Draw another land. Opt. Spell Pierce. 
Like, obviously my hand doesn't do shit right now, but I have to top this Spell Pierce. Because, like, he's definitely just going to play, like, either Fable or Soren next turn. And hope to draw something, and it's a, an axe, which is pretty bad. So, okay. Crew's waiting room. We only have, we have three left in our deck. One's taken. We have to convert Spell Pierce here. He has four cards left. Draw Shredder. Shredder's interesting. Um, I think I'm probably supposed to wait on Shredder. Just because, like, he could just go, like, push into three drop next turn. And, I mean, I have cards I want to discard. Like, I could just play Breeding Pool Tap, then I want to discard Steam Vents. I do have a second spell to cast. Um, so I think I'm not going to play Shredder here, yeah. He plays Castle Go. I'm like, okay, is he gonna? Like, is he activating that? Like, he doesn't really have another play, right? Um, but in the case he does want to activate it, I should I should jam Shredder here because now if he wants to push my Shredder, he can't activate the Castle. So Shredder, and then I drew Picklock, which is very good. Cast Free the Fey. Any cruises? Hit Opt. Um, what do I discard here? Probably a removal spell, right? Yeah. And I hit cruise. Okay, let's go. Just jam it before I get thought seized. And draw three lands. Okay, not great. He goes to 15 off the castle. And starts with push. And I think also draws a thought seize. So now it takes my opt. And even though I just drew like pick lock into cruise now my hand sucks again so i'm like this is pretty unfortunate um but all he does is just animate mutavolt and attack so he has three cards left and it's not fable sore and none of that um and he actually takes the axe super super interesting um it probably means he has a shieldred let's check this guy's list like we have been doing to see how many shieldreds he has but i drew another axe so i'm like all right that, that has to be like a pretty good draw yeah, he's one Shieldred in his deck. Only one Archfiend in this version. So, I jam a Opt. Free the phase, great. I just jam that. Spell Pierce, consider. Take consider. I think I jam consider here, too. I can mill, mill, uh, mill a Phoenix. Hit a Cruise. And I just draw a Shredder. So, here I think I Shock and play Picklock Prankster. I just want to hold my Shredder next turn to cast Picklock and Connive. Um, let's see what he does here. He just plays Vein Ripper. Okay, this makes sense on why he took Axe. But I drew another one, so it's really good. Draw Phoenix. Go ahead and play Shredder. Into Axe. Discard land so that I can Connive the Phoenix to counter. Draw another axe. And it looks like I didn't... Okay, yeah. It, it looks like I just discarded land to that um, connive instead of phoenix. Because I can cast phoenix next turn. And I don't have three spells really ready to go. So this all makes sense. And he plays Soren and puts in another one. Okay. And then plays... What's his last card here? Another Soren. So that means last turn he had in hand either two Vein Rippers and one Soren or two Sorens and one Vein Ripper. But this doesn't really matter, like, reading at this point because he has zero cards in hand, so, like, nothing else matters. He's just drawing off the top. Um, I get a Connive, discard Phoenix here. I draw Props, which may be pretty good. And he just goes up with this. And, oh yeah, that, that was a spot where I should have tanked. But... Um, oh no, I, I, I couldn't have, I couldn't have, oh yeah, I could have axed the Van Ripper right there, and sacked my pick lock, right, to do so. I would have to discard the profs. So let's, let's think about why or why not we should have done that. Um, at this point, with an axe in hand, and this profs, so I, I can basically profs this this um, pick lock, and it also draws me a card, so I can maybe get back to Phoenix if I chain stuff, especially with this connive. I can basically put him in a spot where like, 
I'll attack the Soren probably, and he just should be blocking, like, in most spots there. I've already used a bunch of axes, and, like, even if he doesn't block, I'll still have the axe on my turn to block and then axe the Vein Ripper to kill it. So it kind of makes sense that the axe will still be converting on this Vein Ripper anyway. So I think valuing keeping the profs in hand, because it's a pretty strong card here on this board when he doesn't have any cards. It's pretty good. So profs into opt, discard shredder, draw phoenix, phoenix is good. Oh no, I ended up bottoming that phoenix. Really? Oh yeah, I, I guess I can't discard the phoenix to the axe. Um, because I have to use the axe post combat. Because he has to block, right? Or else I'll just, I can axe it, but then he just won't block. So, the Phoenix is actually not as good there as it seems. I go ahead and play Free the Fey, and I think I hit the Pick Your Poison here, right? Yeah, just so insane. Off the Breeding Pool. So, the, the main deck Pick Your Poison kind of wraps this game up here. But I, I think I was kind of chilling without it, to be honest. But I take down the Soren, hit him down to 15. And he just draws with Castle and, and kind of doesn't have any more moves. So props look very good here. I, I have been boarding it out versus all the decks, all the Vamps decks, but in this specific game, it was like, I'd rather keep props than axe this thing before it gets a counter, um, because I think that I can get my creatures to be kind of sizable enough to where he has to block anyway. Um, and then, like, it's just good at that point. Okay, so I took him down game one with the main deck Pick Your Poison. So on the draw here, and he has um, two go blank and two hearse and like two duress, kind of the stock stuff. Only one archfiend though to note. So my picky poisons are definitely worse, but still all three of them are great. Uh, great hand. He duresses and takes my axe. This is a super constructive game, I think. So that's very interesting. Um, that he took. The axe it, it, over like a cantrip because axe is not very good versus like most of his draws I'd say, but it could be good versus either a, a blood tithe aggro draw, where my the rest of my hand could kind of struggle versus, or it could be the axe could be good against Shieldred, where the rest of my hand kind of struggles versus, especially knowing that I probably boarded out some amount of axes, um, taking one is kind of pretty pretty big game. Um, so I think go ahead and play a sleight of hand here. And this is the most important decision of the game, it ends up being. So either I can, I can take Breeding Pool, or I can take Impulse. And my hand here kind of wants lands, like, pretty badly. Um, and it's also a green land, right? So a green land is, is good, because I have Pick Your Poisons. So my inclination was to take Breeding Pool, because if he has Shieldred which is why he took Axe, I need to be able to, like, play on my land drops to be able to, like, look for that that last copy of Lightning Axe. Like, kind of dig for it, because my deck is super weak to Shieldred if I only have one Axe in my deck, so I need to make sure that I at least have the lands to look for it. Um, but I, 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 I weighed that versus the, the fact that he could have just a Blood Tithe aggro draw, which is why he took Axe. And, but I, I was like, would you really take Axe there if you have Blood Tithe Aggro? I guess you would, over over a slight. Um, but I, I felt like with the with the spells in my deck, I could beat the Blood Tithe Aggro draw more often than the Shieldred if I didn't have lands. So I, I took Breeding Pool, and I think it was correct to do this. I do think it was correct to do this. Also, I can't, like, tell you how valuable having the green source in your hand is, because, like, if you don't, Later in the game, if you draw Pick Your Poison, then you have to look for the green source, right, as well. So it's kind of like an A plus B combo sort of thing. Or if you already have the green source, any Pick Your Poisons are just, like, you, you're going to find them and they're going to be good. Like, if he plays Hearse here. Like, for example, if he plays Hearse here, I'd much rather have this than the Fire Impulse. It's not even close. So, let's see what happens. He ends up playing Blood Tithe, and now I'm like, fuck, like, okay. His play made sense now that I know that his Blood Tithe draws what he's going for, and... I wish I took the, the impulse probably, especially drawing another picklock. I have so much moves, but no removal. 
hits me here. Plays Bankbuster, no land. But that means next turn, if he has like another Blood Tithe, he can crew, and then it's a then it's a scary card. But I don't look for Spell Pierce there. I'd rather um, pick luck, look for removal. I hit pick your poison, but like obviously he's a blood, so I didn't kill this. Um, do I still take pick your poison? I think I do. Yeah, it's just better than opt. Like opt is is not good here. Okay, I draw a non shock land, which is fine, and just pass. And then he plays another Blood Tithe and a Mutavault too. So I'm like, fuck, like I'm so dead. If if I kept the the impulse, it would have been probably a way different game. So now I'm I'm gonna pick Luck here and kind of hope I hit one of my last like two removal spells in my deck. But I just hit a Cruise and just basically die from here. Cast Opt with Cruise with I think. Just fast forward through this turn. Yeah, like, my hand is just all, like, card draw spells. I do find an impulse. I, I find, like, my second impulse. The first one to the bottom. But, unfortunately, it's too little too late. Like, he jams. He does jam a shield read, so he actually had, had both of the plans. That makes Axe good. Um, Alright. Kind of crushed me that game. I think if I took the fiery impulse, like, I maybe could have won. I, I'm not sure if I could have won, but... Like, I for sure have way more game. But th there I just got crushed. Alright, game three. I'm gonna play. Uh, good hand. I, I shock there, because I'm always going to be shocking. With this hand, like, I'm always going to be wanting to cast out all my spells. And this could potentially be put on red if I draw, like, Crackling Drake and Breeding Pool shit down the line. So. Consider, there's a Drake, and I'm just going to keep this Drake. I trust that the second Consider can find me more lands. He didn't have Thoughtseize here, so... Um, I can basically kind of set up whatever I can here and hope that it's good enough. So now, now I play the land in blue just so I could slide of hand and um, hold up this impulse. And there, there was a lightning axe, but I took the land because it's just kind of way more important here. I also have an impulse already, so I can kill one thing. I think he plays, yeah, he plays Blood Dive, my impulse. Pretty good sequence for me. Oh, wow. I, I consider and mill. Okay, we should talk about that. I consider and top spell pierce instead of playing fiery impulse. Why? I think the reason is that if I draw. Oh, I know the reason. The reason is. um. The reason is Ledger Shredder. So consider gives me more looks at Ledger Shredder now than if I just take a draw step, right? So I'd rather consider, try to find Ledger Shredder, and then go Ledger Shredder plus Impulse this on my own turn, instead of play Impulse on this, and then have Consider up for the next turn. The, there, there are trade-offs. Like, if, if I Impulse this now... No, no, th there's actually no trade-offs. That was just always always the correct thing to do. I want to do this to look for Ledger Shredder, because it's a good curve here. I can play Shredder and then Impulse this. Discard Phoenix. Seems good. Um, here. But I, yeah, I, I do top the Spell Pierce off the, off the Consider there, to note. Because it's just pretty good here against most of his stuff, like Fable. He plays Soren, and especially with a Mutavolt, like it is just important that I that I spell pierce this. Also, I just don't have a green sourced um, for pick your poison here yet either. So spell pierce converted. It, it, here was also loose. I should have opted before spell piercing because like. If I top or whatever, he could think that I top the spell purse, but that's not that important. But that, that's definitely loose. Um, I'm going to bottom the sleight of hand because I just want to find a land here. And then go ahead and impulse that. And I find cruise, so that's like 
Maybe better than a land, honestly. Um, so I cruise here. And hit two phoenixes plus a land, which is not great, honestly. So let's play land go. Pretty weak to something like Archfiend here. His hearse, which I'm, I'm fine against. And then Bank Buster. Okay. So now I feel okay. But, like, he has stuff going on. Like, he's drawing cards with this. He has a blood. He's eating my graveyard. And I can only cast, like, one creature a turn, right? Also, the blood turns on Fatal Push. So I draw Braiding Pull, but it's it's not very good here. Um, I'm going to play it tapped. For, like, an Archfiend or something. Draw Cruise. So go tap land, go. I, I did think about playing Phoenix there, but if if the Drake hits even one time, it makes these Phoenixes get there way more often. So I'd, I'd rather, like, let's say he has a Fatal Push, like, a couple cards down. I'd rather get the hit in with the Drake and take the chance that it dies later than play a Phoenix and hope he, like, Fatal Pushes the Phoenix and doesn't have another removal spell. So yeah, I'm hoping that the Drake just hits once and then the Phoenixes can get there. But he has... Bitter Triumph to kill it, so okay, it's kind of sad. And Fable, okay, so one card in hand, but now he has a lot of looks at stuff. Um, but no, I, I do have a, I do have a pick your poison here to get the Fable. I think that's what I do, right? Yeah, I go ahead and pick your poison plus Phoenix. Now he can get a six land with this and cast Vein Ripper, but I mean. I still have an axe, and I, I think I just have to kill the Fable and, like, limit his draws at this point. Instead of, instead of go for random shit. So he draws off, off this. I'm like, okay. Thought seizes me, takes a Phoenix. I'm like, okay, okay, that, that's fine. Like, it puts you down to 11. So my Phoenixes kill faster than 13. And he took, he takes one of them, but I still have another one. So this is fine. And he plays Go Blank, which is also fine. I'm like, holy shit, like, I could actually win this game. Because I was winning at first, but then I drew, like, two Phoenixes off that Cruise and didn't feel good. But now he has no cards and then Go Blanks. So I can discard, like, Cruise Impulse. Like, these cards are pretty bad. Or Cruise Axe, okay. I, I just go ahead and kill that because I don't want him getting another mana next turn. Because he has a lot of things to do, right? He has a Blood and a Bank Buster. So, like, anything that gives him more mana gives him more, more like, kind of outs in, in a sequence of draws. So, I kill that and attack with Phoenix. And he has no cards in it. I feel like, like, I'm probably favored to win this game right now. Like, he has three draws, right? A Blood, a Draw Step, and a Bank Buster. So, let's see what happens. Draws off Bank Buster, right? No, he plays Dust Legion Zealot. So I'm like, it's pretty weird. Like, wh why would you, why would you play that over doing anything else? Um, and that limits his outs of Vein Ripper now. So he basically has to have Soren, or else he loses. I think he draws off Bank Buster, and I'm like, please, no Soren, no Soren. And he plays, he draws Soren, and now I basically just lose. Like, he sacks this next turn. He sacks Mutavault, kills my Phoenixes, exiles him with Hearse. I basically have to draw, like, Crackling Drake right now, or else I can't win. So that, that, that was pretty unfortunate. I was kind of tilted at that one. Like, I felt like I put myself in a really good spot, and he just ripped Soren, like, a three-outer. But, happens. I draw I draw a land, and then the next turn I draw another land. Okay. So I'm 3-1 now. Okay, here, this is Vamps again. So, five rounds in a row I play Vamps. I'm on the play. Um, let's search up this guy's list. Okay, so he has two Shieldreds. Um, zero Archfiend in the Dross in this list. He has a Kroxa. And the Kalidus. Okay. So my, my axes are really important here. Uh, this hand is going to be a keep. 
it's just it has a cruise. I mean, it's it's kind of like not very good, but you can't really mull against vampires again, like I said. Just shock a steam vents tapped. He thought this is me off a of kept seven. Okay, I draw another cruise. So it was pretty good. And it just plays blood tie. Then I kill it. Draw phoenix. Okay. I mean, I'm not really doing anything here. It's a problem. And he's a fable, so now I'm like, that's not great. Um, let's see, do I decide to kill it? I don't think so, right? No. Because I can draw, like, I can draw a cantrip into a green source there, and then I can have three spells to get back Phoenix while killing both of these. So, here I draw Spell Pierce, so now, now I'm gonna definitely kill the, the Goblin. But I'll let him loot first. He discards two lands. Kill Goblin, discard Phoenix. And I do get to convert, at least my spell appears here. And he has a hive as his other land. Then I draw Prankster, I'm like, okay, that's like, very good draw. If I can Prankster here, um, into a cantrip, and then go cruise into a land, I can cast that cantrip, and then get back Phoenix here, and kind of have a lot going on. I hit Impulse, Axe, and another Phoenix. So, okay, this is good. This is this is good because I hit a Phoenix, but the, the Impulse isn't good. Now I have to cruise. The problem is cruising here, I exile one of my phoenixes, so I can't, like, cruise into green source, pick your poison, get back both. Um, so, with this impulse that I have, now I can stop this hive from getting a phoenix. I think I should just pass here, like, he has, like, one draw, maybe two with the blood out of Thoughtseize, but, like, exiling a phoenix is pretty big game. And I think I'm kind of behind enough to where I need to keep all my phoenixes and maximize that, so I just pass here instead of cruising. Hoping for no thoughts user duress, obviously. That would be brutal. He plays Black Cleave Cliffs and says go, right? So that's very good for me. Like, he didn't even, he didn't even want a blood here. Which is kind of interesting. Um, I think he just has Vayne Ripper next turn, probably. Like, I, I Spell Pierce the Soren. He's now playing to six lands. Like, okay. Um... He could have, like, a Vein Ripper and a land in hand, so he doesn't want a blood, and, like, another, like, reasonable card. Like, I don't know what that card could be. Um, maybe even a second Vein Ripper or something. Maybe, maybe a push, but I'd probably blood the push. I don't know, it's close. So I draw Consider. I start with Consider. Um, I think I do keep this, because I expect, yeah, I expect a Vein Ripper next turn. So, green source is definitely pretty solid. Okay. And I have to cast a third spell here, so I think I go ahead and kill the reflection. And I don't even show him that I have a green source in hand. Um, so he doesn't really know anything. Also, I, I, I'm holding up the axe, I guess, for hive or something. So he shocks and van rippers. Yeah. And now I just pick your poison it, play profs, play opt, spell pierce up, profs on that, attack for eight, like, he's just kind of dying here. And I got him, okay, Mandic pick your poison, gets another vein ripper, you'd love to see that. That game wasn't looking very good for a minute, but... Once I realized his hand was just two Vein Rippers and like my cruise didn't get taken, I was like, okay, I just gotta set up this pick your poison and I can, I can kind of win. So I'm gonna draw here. Like, I think if this hand, if this was like an Aspire Bluff, I would keep, but I mean, this is just way too bad with the tap land. So, oh shit, I, I skipped through that. Let's let's go back to my, my card that I bottomed. So he, uh, he keeps seven, and here, I either bought him, like, Phoenix or Axe, but I think it's just Phoenix, right? Because the Axe actually had, had, um, major play here against his list. Because he has, like, multiple Shieldreds. So I draw Axe for turn, which is really bad. Now I wish I kept Phoenix, obviously. 
Um, I just play this tap so I can have Prankster on two. And he plays Blood Tithe. And I draw the third X. I only have three in the deck, and I'm like, jeez, bro. But I can Prankster here. Hope to get some stuff working in my favor. But he plays Fable here. I hit Treasure Cruise and three lands, okay. And then another Treasure Cruise, okay. Like just sleight of hand. And hit like Shredder Spell Pierce. So this is just basically fucked at this point. I have to pick your poison, the Fable, and then hope to draw like a red source next turn and Shredder Axe to connive and kind of unlock my hand. But yeah, this is this is pretty brutal. Um, let's see what he does here. Yeah, Soren Ripper. I was like, okay, GG. I draw Cruise, yeah. Okay, really bad draws there for me. But his hand was good. Game three, I'm on the play. And I keep this hand, I think. And go with pass. He keeps seven. Plays Blood Crypt tapped. Okay, it's pretty good for me. I consider into a borrower, but I don't really think I want this. Yeah, I'd rather just try to find crews and stuff. When when my hand lacks so many like key things, borrower's just not a card you want. Borrower's good if you're already like having all your moves going, and then borrower kind of just like pushes you over the line. Also, I, I only play borrower versus vamps on the play. On the draw, I think it's like worse than um, a removal spell, but on the play, I think it's a bit better because it's a creature too, so you can kind of get there with it. Like you saw me kill people with with attacking with phoenixes a couple times. Um, okay, so now I have two ops here. Let's see what they do. Blood Tithe. I'll just cast some ops. Bottom that. Draw another land. I was like, come on. Keep a consider. Okay. Draw Phoenix. And Phoenix isn't the worst, but it's still in the Treasure Cruise waiting room. I cast Cruise now because I could hit like Shredder. Or I could mill a card. Down to up to six cards in graveyard and draw treasure cruise, but here opt is good enough. I'll just keep opt, and I think play spire bluff canal. So hoping for like soar and vein ripper, I guess. But even that, like, it's not very good for me. I don't really know what I'm hoping he has. No lands, I guess. But he has a land, and. Fable, so I opt. Fiery Impulse. Um, like, this is not very good, but how, how am I winning this game? Like, obviously, if, if I hit a Spell Pierce here, I can counter it, and then I'm kind of okay. Um, if I draw Treasure Cruise, I can maybe fight the Fable on a different axis. But just the fiery impulse by itself, it's like maybe okay because I, I can pick your poison, the fable. Let's see what I end up doing here. I do keep it. Um, what do I go? I just go after the the goblin, right? Yeah. Okay. I think this is fine. Like it's it's reasonable to keep that card. Anything that buys me more time to be able to find um, treasure cruise is is okay to top. Um, potentially I shouldn't have impulsed there because I drew axe. She kind of punishes me, but I don't know. There's, like, cards I can draw um, where I want to be able to spend all my mana, like um, Picklock. And also, with him having, like, two Shieldreds, I'm not even sure I would have fired the Axe off. Because I can just take this Blood Tithe hit. Cast another one. So now I'll just go to my turn. Draw cruise. I'm like, alright, let's go. I ripped. Draw a slight spell pierce. And then I hit picklock here. And an impulse. But I'm just going to get the picklock. I can already kill one of the guys and bring back a phoenix. Um, so I, I play picklock to try to hit more phoenixes. But I just hit no phoenixes and no spells. So I'm like, fuck. 
So I have to just kill this, get back Phoenix, no attacks. And my hand is, like, horrible, so. Not the great end-up spot after, um, drawing Cruz there. He bloods away that. And then I think plays Soren, yeah. I think he sacks... Oh, no, he, he has a Vein Ripper. So now I just, I'm just taking infinite damage. And I basically have to draw another Cruz into, like, um... Into pick your poison here, but I, I whiff and die. Okay, GG. So 3-2. I end up getting a scoop from the last guy in round 6 because my breakers were better. So I make top 8. And now we play round 7. Against, um, I think the same guy. Or one of the guys we just played against. Yeah. But vampires as well. Um, so I have this hand on the draw. I'm going to keep... Um, like, I even have two spell pierces, so I'm kind of insulated against a Thoughtseize plus, like, Fable or some shit. So, I'm, I'm going to keep this on the draw. He keeps seven, no Thoughtseize. Tap land, I draw land, which is great. And, um, I just go ahead and Sleight of Hand. And I'm just, I think I'm just going to take Cruise here. Get all my moves in my hand. Seems pretty good. Plays Hive into nothing. Oh shit, Okay. I sleight of handed and I found uh, a land off that, I think. So I'm feeling very good about my spot here after I get to convert the spell pierce. Um, here I just go ahead and play it on blue and pass. He dresses me. This is going to be let resolved. And another fable. So I'll look for my last spell pierce here. No to that. But I draw pick lock, so I'll just be playing that here. And I hit one phoenix and um, either an axe or an impulse. So I think I take the axe here. And now I can start off with cruising, and I did hit the one pick your poison here for the um, for the fable actually, so that's not bad. Um, I had another phoenix, so I think what I'm gonna be able to do here, I end up wanting to hold the pick your poison for vein rippers here instead of wanting to kill the fable, because as I said before, the fable's like not super relevant in this guy's deck. Um, especially when I don't know his hand. So, I have to kind of have a good reason to be able to, wanting to kill it. Instead of holding my Vein Ripper, or my Pick Poison for Vein Ripper. So I top the Pick Lock there. And then I'm just going to put in a Phoenix here. Use my Axe, play a Tap Land, and swing for 6. Like what? Like what is the fable doing? Even if it loots him two cards, like I have two phoenixes going. It's game one. He doesn't have hearse. Like I'm trying to just crushing right. He goes ahead and plays another fable, which doesn't really matter. He doesn't even have revolt for push. And I think I just I just play another phoenix here. Yeah, just beat his ass. And I don't think he has much. He loots two again. And concedes. Okay, cool. Dominated that game one. Because, I mean, he didn't just he just didn't play a card in turns one or two. And I had double spell pierce, so I was chilling. Um, okay. We're on the draw here. And our hand is, like, fine. No thoughtsies again. I'm pretty happy about that. And I'm just going to go ahead and play sleight of hand. Botanical saying some consider. We're just taking consider here. He plays Black Cleave Clips Hearse. Okay. And I think I play Shredder. Yeah. Like, if, if he plays a 3-drop here, I want to play Shredder because it um, just gets it in play. And if he pushes, he's not playing a 3-drop, so I'm pretty happy with, with Shredder here. Let's see what he does. He went push into Bank Buster, so, okay. Unfortunate that I don't really have a play here. Um, all my cards are four drops, like Phoenix is not, not a good draw at all here. 
um, I just go ahead and pass. Maybe try to spike a pick lock here and step. I, I did think about playing consider there to look for Shredder to jam, like to just play a card, but I, I don't think that's really reasonable. Shredder's not even very good. And if he plays like a card that I would want to um, spell pierce here, now I get like four looks at a spell pierce. So he thought seizes. Uh, I just let it resolve. He takes the Drake. And I think just draws a card here. So let's see if he's a land. He does not have a land. So I'm like, okay, I can I can maybe win this game. Like he had a, he had a pretty good start, but now like he has holes in his plan. His, his his hands a little clunky. So I consider I hit a cruise easy mill, and then I draw the the pick lock. So I'll jam that. I hit your pick. I'll pick your poison here. Okay, it's not very good. But you're most likely just playing a phoenix, trying to attack him when he's still struggling to hit his land drops here. He's at 13 now. Let's see what he does. So he draws with Bankbuster, and I'm like, okay, this has to be so good for me. Like, next turn I have another one coming. We're chilling. I just need to dodge, like, kind of land into like a removal spell but he doesn't have very many removal spells without revolt i think it's like just bitter triumphs and he's like two but he does draw land so i'm like okay really want to dodge bitter triumph because i don't know what else he could really be doing if he doesn't draw land into bitter triumph there but I, he does unfortunately so now i'm kind of i'm kind of tilted i feel like he kind of got lucky to get out of that hole and now like he's going to probably take over the game so he just passes here again I opt. Pretty interesting pass by him. Um, another pick lock is is good, I think. Because now I can I can hit Cruz here. Because he can't really exile my cards. Maybe he can, but then I can hit Phoenix. So I hit Sleight of Hand. No Phoenixes. I Slight. Um, and he, even if he exiles here, I'll still have enough to Cruz. So I'm like, give me Cruz, please. He goes ahead and draws. And then what? Fatal push. Okay. Um, I hit another Phoenix, so I'm going to take that. And then play another sleight of hand. I'm, I basically need to, needed to find Cruise there. I didn't want to play pick lock because I just need to find Cruise to have any shot. But I find another sleight of hand, cast it again. Breeding pool. And I think I make him sack something. Yeah. Sack the bank buster so I don't get hit for millions. And pass back. I suppose another blood tithe. Crew. Another hearse. I'm just getting clobbered here. Do I have any draws? I do draw Drake. Like, basically, anytime you see me, like, being very dead, I can draw Drake and it can flip the game. So, here, for example, I drew Drake and now I can play Pick Lock to block this hearse, and I'm gonna win, because this is, like, what, 11 power? Yeah. So, I, I basically win now, if he doesn't have anything. Just out of nowhere, I was super dead. So, let's see what I drake into. Land. So, now I could pick your poison if I want. Do I want to? No. Okay. That makes sense. Like, I don't want him to play, like, a vein ripper and be able to block the drake next turn and live. So I'm like, please, bro, please do not kill this. I win. He bloods and then pushes. I'm like, fuck. Probably dead. Attacks at the chump. And I draw land. I pick your poison, Phoenix. Attack. Have a chump blocker. I do attack there, because I'm like, how can I win? Basically, like, it's if he uses his hearse and I hit more phoenixes and stuff, but he, he draws a kill at me. I just lose. Okay, close, kind of close game, honestly. Game three in the quarterfinals here. And he keeps seven, and my hand is okay. So, fuck, I skipped through it. Let's Let's restart this. So 
sleight of hand. I take sleight over axe. Pretty easy choice. He leads on thoughtsies. Takes pick walk. Play another sleight of hand. Definitely taking opt over the third pick your poison. I think I go ahead and slight again. No, okay. I I just represent stuff like I represent um spell pierce and fiery impulse. Also, like if he has another thought seize, I'd rather let that resolve and let him take whatever he wants here rather than having played sleight of hand already because then it gives him more information. So that's what happens. It takes consider and plays a tap land. I hit another land, so I'm like, okay, like this is literally the treasure cruise waiting room, right? He played double discard, doesn't have a hearse. Even if he does, I have pick your poisons. No green source, but I can answer it. Um, I just need like basically treasure cruise to kind of pull ahead because right now I'm kind of feeling behind. I mean, my hand isn't very good. So I bought him this crush shredder. Hope for a land here, because then I can discard one of the pick your Land here would have been so good, but I didn't. I think I go with... I think I just go with Shredder here, because if he plays a... Th Again, this is a turn to play it. When he's tapped out, no fatal push, and has, like, three mana next turn. Because um, now if he wants to play a three drop, I kind of get to cast some cantrips and kind of fix my hand. Because my hand's pretty fucking bad right now. And let's see what he does... Pushes, not great. And passes, okay. I do draw a green source, that's not a bad draw. Let's cast sleight of hand, and he cruises. Has another sleight of hand. I'm gonna cast that again. I just spell pierce, okay. I'll just shock my land and pass. Let's see if this spell pierce converts. Bankbuster. I, I will definitely spell pierce this. It's really not getting better, and it's actually trading one for one here because um, he would be able to just draw a card before I get to pick your poison. So good, good spell pierce. Honestly, good use of it at this point in the game. He obviously pays and passes, and I'm like, all right, dude, give me a treasure cruise. Consider mill that. Draw brazen, which is like pretty bad. I'm just gonna pick lock. Or, I mean, I'm gonna pick your poison and. And play my land as I go. I, I feel like I'm... Like, this is kind of for the whole tournament. So there's much more emotion in this game than there was in the last ones. But, yeah, I'm, I'm stressing, bro. But he just animates Muta Vault. So I'm like, okay. This is not like a fable or some shit. Does he have any other play? He has... Blood Tithe. Okay. It's not great for me to see. Because now I'm just getting, like, pressured. And then he plays a blight stuff pathway, and I draw another land. So I'm like, shit. So now I have to, I have to think about how I want to use this brazen because I could shock this land and then like bounce something plus cast the brazen, and then hope to draw like Drake or Phoenix and try to flip the swing. But um, I definitely did calculations here. Let me, let me see what I do. Okay, I shocked. I think my plan was, I'm definitely not gonna um, use pick your poison or brazen here on this blood. I'm just going to. Because, like I said, I'm probably Vein Ripper, so at least I have that covered. I'm probably just going to bounce this Blood Tithe in combat, and then play the Brazen. I could I could not shock and just bounce Blood Tithe and not play Brazen, but I think I need the threat in play. And I could also not bounce the Blood Tithe and just play the Brazen and play my thing tapped. But then, like, I take 5 damage here off the Muta Vault. It's just too much damage. I think giving him another Blood, like bouncing this, giving him another, another Blood is fine. Because, like, yeah, he has blood, but I, I need to draw Cruise anyway to have a shot. So, like, I just need to save damage, basically. He plays Soren. So, I'm like, shit. By the way, he, he knows about this pick your poison in my hand. I should mention that. Like, he thoughts used it. So, he knows. So, he goes Mutavolt. And I, I could have brazened here. That was true. I, uh, I thought about it. But... I, th I actually tanked a while on that on that Muta Vault animation. Um, but I think I'd rather bounce this Blood Tithe and then play Borrower and hope to draw, like, Phoenix and kill the Soren. Or else I don't really know how I'm going to win this game. Like, it's, it's pretty tough. 
but yeah, so he, he pumps the right creature. Unfortunately for me, we bounce the blood tithe and play brazen. And draw Drake. I'm like, let's go. Because, like, imagine I don't draw Drake there. Imagine it's a land. Like, game over. Like, for sure. So I draw Drake. Jam that. Um, I do leave up green here over red. Oh, I have to, because it's double red. Never mind. And then I draw another Drake. I'm like, holy shit, like, this is crazy. I can actually win. So, I think I think I definitely have to go at Soren here. First of all, he could put in, like, a flyer and, thought to, and like, duress this. Like, random, randomly. Second of all, like, ne next turn I can brazen this. It's going to be at three, so it's going to kill it. And the Drake can hit him, so. Definitely going at... Soren here with the Brazen Barber. And then... I, I I tanked on that for a long time. The Pick Your Poison. On the Blood. Because, like, if you think about it... Like, every draw he has... Now that I drew another Drake... Is pretty crucial. Like, he basically can't just run out Blood Tithe anymore. And even if he does... I'll probably want to have the Pick Your Poison on this Blood anyway. So the thing doesn't deal four. So maybe it's not a bad use of Pick Your Poison... To just kill the Blood there. Um, but I realized, like, he could have Vayne Ripper super easily because of the way he already knew about it. So his Soren line to go up instead of down makes sense, even if he has Vayne Ripper. So I'm like, bro, like, he has to have Vayne Ripper, right? Like, what else is really in his range? Like, it's removal spells and Vayne Ripper. So I, I just don't pick your poison. I think it's correct not to. And now I'm basically just hoping to fade, but he top decks Thoughtseize, which is pretty cringe, like, to take the Drake. It's, it's kind of unlucky that it lined up this way. But I'm still in the game. I have a Drake. I have at least one. Animates Mutavolt. Pluses on Mutavolt. Okay. He, he's playing super tight this match, to be honest. I can't block. And then plays Blood Tithe. Down to two cards left in hand still. So, I don't really like my spot here, to be honest. But I draw Opt. It's really good. Let's Opt. Hope to hit. Hit Shredder. Shredder's unfortunately just not good enough. Like, it's basically just like a chump blocker. Or, or is it good enough? Let, let me think. Let me think. Let me think. I think I actually might have might have topped right. I think I went top this brazen at Soren. I'm cast pick your poison, sack this so you can't blood tithe my crackling Drake. Kill Soren. With Brazen, attack you for 11 with Drake, play Ledger Shredder, Chump Block, Mutavol, take 3, kill you with Crackling Drake. I, I, I think this is honestly good enough to top here. Um, pick Your Poison now doesn't hit Vein Ripper, but he has to have a land too, because he only has 6. So, I think this is actually, th this gives me just enough equity to win, because like a random card off the opt is just maybe not good enough here. And this, this does win on board. Like, he has to have cards in his hand that beat it. So, I think I top, right? I bought him. Okay. Why did I bought him? It's so interesting. Like, this was such a tight game. I, I don't know what my decisions... Like, if, if they're mathematically right or wrong. Based on his range. But... I, I guess, like, I thought that that line is just kind of not good enough. Like, he has a blood still, and any Soren kills me, too. So, I was just like... Also, it, it is quite likely that he has another Soren. I did definitely put him on that. Because the turn he went for Soren and, like, ticked up on his guy, I was like, okay, like, he could either have another another Soren or, like, a Vein Ripper, maybe? But, like, he's being super aggressive with this Soren. So, I don't know. I thought that, like, I guess I could do better, and I had more equity just, like, putting that to the bottom and not going for the all-in line. Because my, my deck does have, like, a lot of very good cards in it still to draw. So I drew Opt again, so I'm like, okay. Because if, if it's a land there, I think I'm fucking dead, right? I'm, I'm pretty dead if there's just a land there. Now I opt, and now I hit a fiery impulse. So now I do the same calculations, 
what's changed between this and Shredder. Um, I will still die to a Sorin because I would have to kill the Blood Tithe and then he'll go animate Sorin, shoot me for like seven. But at this point, I, I, I know I end up topping this after calculating for a while. I don't know why it was different. I guess one of the reasons was... Um, no, it's not even better into Fatal Push because you can turn on Revolt anyway. I don't really know, honestly. Like, why this is a top but Shredder is not a top. Because it's, it's kind of, it seems like the same card, right? No, okay, it, it is slightly different. I can fiery impulse this and then have pick your poison in my hand still. So I don't have to use it on one of the bloods, which I would have had to if I played Shredder because it would have killed my Crackling Drake if I didn't do that. So now, like, I guess I have slightly more percentage points into land Vein Ripper and like probably one of his cards is a Vein Ripper in hand. I don't know. Like, I don't know what else it would be. Um... So this this does it is true that this does give me slightly more percentage of winning the game because now I have the pick your poison for the vein ripper. Like honestly, I don't really know what's correct. Um but it does I I got rewarded for bottoming the shredder cuz now I just have more percentage to win. So I like that at least. Um and I go for my line Don't kill a blood. And just pray for no Soren. Plays land. And I'm like, please play Vayne Ripper. If he plays Vayne Ripper, I have lethal, right? I have, yeah, I just have lethal. If he plays Vayne Ripper, I feel so smart. Like, just unreal smart. But he doesn't, I think. Yeah, he plays Extinction Event. So I'm like, Jesus, okay. He hits my Drake. But the game goes on, like, I'm at one. This is like, this is like such a, a sweat, honestly. And now I draw Cruz, and I'm like, holy shit, like, because I'm, I'm obviously dead there if I draw a land, like, he attacks me, I don't have a blocker. So, I draw Cruz. I'm like, please. Draw Phoenix Picklock. Okay. Um, I can I can start with free the Fey because I can always just play the picklock as a blocker. Um, this will kill. This will make fatal push kill Phoenix anyway, so it's not like playing the Phoenix makes it live through more removal. Picklock. I don't hit a Phoenix. I hit opt consider, so I take consider. I think I cast consider. Okay. No, I don't. I go pick your poison here. Make you sack of blood, and then play picklock prankster. Because the the problem is like, I mean this is obviously pretty easy honestly. Because this doesn't kill Vayne Ripper anymore. I'm at one life. I just lose. So making the blood die is super relevant because it's an extra draw to removal spell. I have to play this and chump block the Muta Vault, and then attack for three, and then next turn try to attack with for six to kill him. So it's pretty easy line, but super lucky that I drew Cruz to even get in this spot and now i just have to fade like removal spell soren um vein ripper is beatable because i can find a way to kill him next turn but it's it's actually not very likely like i'd probably lose to vein ripper to be honest i would have to like mill another phoenix or something yeah I, i'd lose to vein ripper i think but he bloods away a fable and swings and okay i'm getting the block no soren please Plays another muta, yeah, another muta vault and passes with one card in hand, and I just go for it and win. And his, his last card in hand was uh, Takanuma. Which, so that's like a crazy game, I guess. When we were thinking about what he had in hand, whether to keep that shredder or not, his hand was like Takanuma and Extinction Event. I think it was those two cards, yeah. Or maybe, no, maybe it was Takanuma plus Blightstep Pathway, and then he drew Extinction Event. So I think his hand was just two lands, and I was going to win 
No, no, I, 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 w- I would have lost, I think, if I went for the other line, yeah. Because then he goes Extinction Event. Oh, no, I guess Extinction Event also kills his Blood Tithe. So, I still, I think, would have won with that line. I still would have went to one, and the game would have played out the exact same way. But, just crazy, like, how that happened. Um, and then, okay, last match of the tournament. I guess that's a spoiler, but... We're top four here against Amalia. And I'm on the play. I go ahead and keep this hand. Seems good. Uh, okay. I go ahead and opt. So he doesn't play a one drop. Uh, Cruz is good enough here. I Okay, I, I've played against Amalia a bunch of times on Phoenix, but not enough to feel confident in, like, my ability to play it perfectly, to be honest. Like, I was kind of out of it for this match because um, the reason is because I thought that if I top forward this event, then I would have enough mox points, leaderboard points, to get me in first place on the leaderboard. So now I kind of feel like a little more relaxed that I won that last match. And I was that was like so so much adrenaline in that in that last match. So I'm kind of taking it a little easier, but that's that's obviously like really bad mental. Um, so I'm, I might be making mistakes here, but I think I've played all the other matches like kind of as well as I could have. Um, so I play this on red. I think it's it's correct to do that. And he goes innkeeper, I think, yeah. Don't love to see that here, but if he has Coco next turn, I can spell Pierce, so. Um, opt, I think I'm just going to bin that, yeah. I need to find, like, more blue sources or something. Yeah, okay, Steam Vents is good. I'll just play that in pass. So he gets in for one. Hoping he passes here, obviously, but he plays bat. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and impulse it. As I don't think I want to axe it yet. I know he has like at least one or two uh, sentinels in his deck, in his main deck, like the 3 4. So I'll opt. Brazen's bad. Draw Shredder. Shredder's okay. Now I draw Sleight of Hand. So. I just I just play sleight of hand. I don't want to shredder into sleight of hand because if I whiff on land, I'll probably lose or have a good shot at losing. Um, slight is decent because if I find a land off the slight, then I can comfortably cast cruise and still have a an axe up. And I do, so I take the land and do exactly that. Put it on the blue. And cast crew. Oh, I just then I cast Shredder here. Super interesting. Uh, this is correct too. I, I went off on a tangent before, but this this is good, for sure. I, I want to have Cruise for my next turn, where it's one mana and getting Shredder in play is super important. I can get the Phoenix down next turn, because I I kind of need to pressure him or else I'm pretty behind. But he does end up passing, so this is good for me. I'm assuming my Spell Pierce might connect. Oh no, he doesn't. So he goes to second man and casts something. Wild growth, yep. And then passes, so no shredder trigger. I draw tap land. I just go ahead and cast cruise for two mana here, keeping all my red untapped. And here I have a spot. Um, I think this is my best moment to put these phoenixes into play and like try to start killing him, or else I'm probably just gonna lose like this this late game. So I'm, I'm pretty confident that we should just double axe both his creatures here. Or at least axe the first one and see what we draw. So I do Torch, that's a great draw. Discard Phoenix to my Connive. He doesn't do anything there. Torch that, okay. And then attack for 8. So now I like my spot and I like the way I've played this game so far. He goes, he plays Coco. I'm going to spell pierce this. 
Um, it, it's another card, my graveyard of Federal Cruz, and it takes away treasure, which I, I feel is pretty important. Also, he, he can, like, hit, like, uh, a couple things here, and then still have two mana to cast, like an Amali or something. So I'd rather just cut that off right now. As basically, I'm, I'm just playing a tempo game at this point. Like, I have lethal in two turns, so I just need to survive those two turns. So he pays and hits... What does he hit? Lunark plus Selfless Savior. Okay. I draw Cruise. So I'm going to cast it for four. And, okay. There's basically pass with Axe up. I put that in tapped because next turn I might need to use all my mana to get, like, another Phoenix in the... In the, uh, in the bin to kill him if he gains some life here. I don't know. So I'm, I'm hoping I can win. But he plays Amalia. Okay. Okay. And then just plays Wild Growth. And I just have to kill the Wild Growth and draw the game. Which is unfortunate. I, I liked my spot and the way I played. So I kind of thought that I should be winning. Um, so ending up with a draw is not great. But... Uh, I guess it's better than losing. His hand was his hand was quite good. Okay, game game one again, but this was a bug, so we both got to sideboard for game one, and then he got to play. Like it rolled again, I guess. I don't know. So I I don't know how I feel about that. Like, um, like we both. It's 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 definitely not how the the match should have played out, right? We both should have been like I should have had to play again for game one. And we shouldn't have sideboarded. So I, I, I messaged the DECs about it like afterwards, and I'm trying to get, I don't know, I'm just trying to like get their opinion on, on what um, should have happened. But I probably should have contacted the DECs during the, the match to be honest. Um, but yeah, I'm on the draw with Anger of the Gods in my deck basically, and he is he sideboarded too. So my hand's good. He keeps seven. Draw Anger, I shock my land. He plays Innkeeper again. Kind of unfortunate, but okay, I'm not going to kill that because I drew an Anger. Um, here is a spot where I don't know really what's correct, but I think if I don't play Shredder here, it's just like so scuffed. Like my, my, my hand is like very non-functional. I mean, I could wait and play Shredder next turn, but I feel like I should definitely just play Shredder here and hope to not die. I also don't even have a spell pierce for the for a Coco, so like I could represent, of course, but I think it, I think I have to play Shredder here and hope to just like draw a Cantrip next turn to like start going. Um, he Coco's hits Amalia and that, and he bends the Sentinel, so this is still a three three, and he draws two lands. Okay. Um, here I have the choice of. Angering, but it's it's so bad into cord because he cords for the dog and saves his Amalia and like I lose my shredder. It's just so bad. So I don't think I can do that. Um, I basically think I just have to pass honestly and let him keep making moves. But I will shock in my steam vents. I think instead of playing my land tapped. Yeah. No attacks. I need to, to block more than I need to one damage. Um, let's see what he goes for. So he just plays wild growth. And I am forced to axe the Amalia. I can't. I can't impulse because I don't have um, spell mastery. So here, I'm. I'm dead to cord here. Cord for two for wild growth because I don't have spell mastery here. Um, and I. I could have played around this. Oh no, I'm. I'm not because he'll cast cord. I get a connive. Discard a spell. I'll cast fire impulse. Get a connive. Discard a spell. So it's. It's okay. There's nothing I can I can really do other than axe this. And then he lets that go. Okay. I think... Oh, let's... Let go. Okay. Um, I definitely can't impulse anything here. Because he can cord for the shit and win. Like, obviously there's always a choice to do that. Because I can bluff Spell Pierce, but... I don't think it's correct. So now I draw Spell Pierce. Um... But I don't have Anger plus Pierce up here, unfortunately. 
Even if I did, I don't I don't know if it's correct to do that because I kind of want the shredder alive. It's pretty fucked if it's not alive. So I, I think I'm I'm playing land go and just representing stuff. He returns the Amalia. I'm gonna spell pierce this. I believe. Just to beat Extraction Specialist for this one turn. Yeah. This makes sense, right? Now he goes to only two mana left. And he has like three or four Extraction Specialists post board. Um, and then here I end up, I think, just killing the Wild Growth Walker. Because, um, yeah, yeah, this this is correct. Because here he only has Cord, since I, since I Spell Pierced, right? He only has Cord for one up. And if he cords for one and gets dog to save wild growth, like, we draw the game. I'm super happy with that, because I feel like I'm quite behind here. And, um, if not, this just resolves, and I get to get my fiery through a cord. So I just discard that consider. He gets this back, hits more Malia's. And just plays another wild growth. I think I whiff on yeah, I whiff on removal and concede. So that was unfortunate, but like that's kind of how the matchup plays out a lot of the time. Like I I tried my best. I think I sequenced my removal um spells and spell pierce as well as as I could, but like if it just has all the tools, it's really hard to win unless unless you have what I did game one where I put a bunch of Phoenixes in play and put them on a clock. So now I'm on the play. And this hand's like fine. It's not amazing, like, I don't have Shredder, but, um, it has the tools to, like, if I draw a Trigger Cruise, like, it's okay. So I, I opt, I think, a land to the bottom, because I just need moves. I draw Shredder, that's good. And another Impulse. So I play Shredder in my hands, all red cards. And he goes for Innkeeper again. And I just draw another anger, so I'm like, okay, whatever. Attack, go. Kind of brutal spot for me, to be honest. He plays another innkeeper, okay. And I think he passes after playing land. Problem is, I, I just can't kill any of these things and trigger connive here. It's just too bad. I do draw a land and um, pass, no attacks. I'd rather block. Plays his fourth land and just says go. And I, f I feel like I'm getting pretty, like, fucked here. Because I can't cast any spells. Which is kind of the kind of why the matchup's, like, not very good. I draw another impulse, okay. I'm basically hoping that, like, this guy fucks it up somehow. That I can survive when he goes for his move. And then play anger and wipe his stuff. And have like a 2-4 Shredder or something. I don't think it's like a, a 0 that that happens. But like, yes. He plays Cord or Coco around Spell Pierce with the treasures. Hits Selfless Savior Wild Growth. I'm like, okay. It's not very good for me. But we pass. And he plays Amalia. And I impulse the Amalia. Should I have impulsed the dog before Amalia resolves? I don't know, I guess. I guess it saves me from ward. Yeah, I, I think I should have done that. I guess, yeah, that was better. It just lost me three extra life by doing it like this. But not not, not a super huge mistake. Um, Alright, so I impulse. So he, he saves uh, Amalia. I impulse it again. Get a Shredder Trigger. It all resolves. And then he plays Extraction Specialist. So I have to kill Amalia again. And then I'm, I'm going to anger here and it's gonna be good but he has a cord as well so he hit selfless savior off 
Coco, Selfless Savior plus Wild Growth off Coco, and then had Amalia plus Extraction plus Cord in hand. So that's that's just way too much. If he had one less of those things, like, I guess my plan would have been good. Like, I could have angered all of this um, and had a Phoenix in the yard. But it's not the way it played out, and he killed me and I lost. So yeah, that is it. GG's.